Well, would you look at that? I didn't lose any teeth. Hey, everybody. Just in the garage working on some clocks. Uh, a comment came in yesterday that I responded to this morning, and there's been sort of a social media discussion going on um, regarding open faced helmets. And a video I made in the past, basically, I made a video about open faced helmets, it's got pretty good views on it, I think. Um, I wasn't very tactful in that video, and I basically just said, if you wear an open faced helmet, you're an idiot. Uh, I, I want to basically elaborate on that subject a bit more with more years of experience and, and more things and more evidence and study and stuff like that that I just want to add in. Now I will say at this point, if you own, use an open face helmet and you are happy doing that, knowing the full risks of using that helmet, which are things I'm going to talk about in this video, if you know all of this, you are fully within your rights to continue using that helmet and do whatever you like. I'm not here to tell people they can't do things. What I'm doing is giving my opinion on this because a lot of new riders looked at me for advice. And as I said to the original comment, if I didn't say something about this, I feel like I'm doing them an injustice. It needs to be said. Everyone can take their own risks as long as they understand the risks. Someone likened this debate to the TT argument about whether the TT should be banned. Those are two things that have no correlation with each other. You know, a select group of racers on a closed road doing something which is very dangerous, but statistically, yeah, some people die. But if you look through the history of motorsport, it's not awful uh, numbers of stuff, but it's completely down to the riders to take that risk. In the same way that it's completely down to you to take the risk of wearing an open-faced helmet. And someone did actually sort of say about, as I say, about the TT, and I said, well, why don't you ask the TT racers why they don't use open-faced helmets? I think you'll find that will actually shorten this argument down really quite quickly. Um, but whatever, I'm going to actually get into some, some figures and things. But the reason why I particularly want to talk about this again is not because I'm trying to dig up an old video. It's because I've seen since that video the use of open face helmets has gone up, it seems. Because of, and I'm going to use this term loosely, but you'll know exactly what I mean, hipsters. You know, the classic rides a triumph or something. Brown leather jacket, satchel bag, open faced helmets and Ray Bans or something. You might like the look, um, and you might think that looking that way is is worth the risk of wearing an open faced helmet. Um, I do think that's kind of ironic. The people who are really concerned about the look are going to probably be the ones who are going to deal with having serious facial trauma and scarring worse than someone who isn't like that. You know, if you're, if you're all about appearances or you, that's something that's big to you, having your face mangled probably will have more of a negative effect on you than someone who isn't. It seems common sense to most people that if you don't have this part, you know, you're gonna smash your face when you have a forward facing crash. And on a motorcycle, they always tend to be forward facing unless you're rear ended, but whatever. Even if you come off sideways, your face can still hit the ground. Uh, I'm going to be check, uh, looking down here for reference, but on a helmet in crashes, 0.4% of damage is to the well, is to the top of the helmet. 3.5 uh, to the front, 3.4 to the rear. 18.3, 12.6, 0.8 on the side here, 12.1 in the back, 4% down here. Okay. 9.9% in the visor area and 34.6% on the chin guard. The one thing that's missing from an open faced helmet, this area, you know, this area, is the highest risk area of being hit in a crash. I don't think I need to explain much more about that than that. So I looked a little bit deeper to try and find some studies with some figures on the differences. Um, and there's a study in, that was done in Brazil. Now that's quite good because in Brazil, although legally you have you have to wear protective um, clothing as well, you know, a helmet of some sort, people there don't wear helmets. Some wear full face helmets and some wear open faced helmets. So they have been able to actually look at the figures of people crashing and seeing what the difference is. As I say, this study is from Brazil. Uh, it was done by the Oral and Facial Surgery Group in Brazil, you know. Um, basically, they said, the study looked at 253 motorcyclists who were victims of road incidents and suffered uh, head and facial injuries. They were all referred to outpatient treatment. Of the motorists in the research, 156 
patients did not wear a helmet. 51 wore an open face helmet and 46 wore a full face helmet despite the law of Brazil requiring motorcycle users to wear a form of protection. So, you know, the ones who didn't wear a helmet should have done. The study found that open face helmets offered little protection against brain injury. Um, of the 156 riders without helmets, 108 suffered a traumatic brain injury. That's equivalent to 69.2% of patients. Shockingly, 39 out of the 51 patients who wore an open face helmet also suffered a brain injury. This is um, a mammoth 76.5% of the people in the study, suggesting little to, uh, or no difference between wearing an open faced helmet and nothing at all. By comparison, only 24 of the 46, that is 52%, versus 76 and 69% of most cyclists with a full face helmet received a traumatic brain injury. So that is scientific proof that you are safer to wear a full face and only marginally better um, wearing an open face than having no helmet at all. Now, of course, this study, I don't know how trustworthy it is. I haven't looked that in deep into it. I don't know where I can find out the information, but... This is information, it appears to be relatively written, well written, it doesn't seem to be made up, it's not got some selling agenda to it. Um, it just seems to show the facts and figures of what Brazil's experienced. But I don't think we need to know the facts and figures just to know what damage can be done to your face if you're wearing an open-faced helmet. You should also consider what the forward problems of that is. Um, in the nicest way to say this, if you have a facial disfigurement, you're going to have a serious disadvantage in life because people are weird about people with strange or different things. If your face is really badly scarred, people are going to notice it. It is probably going to be less advantageous than someone who hasn't got that going on. I think we can all agree that common sense says that this keeps you safer than not having it. Now, there's several arguments that get brought up when we talk about open face helmets. The first one, of course, people say, why are you telling people what they should and shouldn't do? Wrong. I'm not telling you what you should and shouldn't do. I am really saying this is my opinion on it. This is what the, the, the information out there suggests and what common sense says to me about wearing an open face versus a full face. This is my point. If you watch all this, you understand this and you say, do you know what? To me, I'll take that risk. As I say, good on you, you go for it. If you're a new rider and you just didn't think about it, you might just be like, oh, well, everyone uses open faces or I see lots of people use open face helmets and then they have a crash. Informed decisions come from education, and this is an attempt to educate people on the risks of using open-faced helmets. The other arguments that get brought up are, um, oh, well, you know, it's a much more connected experience when you're having an open-faced helmet because you can feel the wind in your face and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I understand your point of view, but you're not going to be able to feel the wind on your face when you don't have one. So having ridden motorcycles for 10 years, I can tell you that above 30 miles an hour, your eyes start to stream. So now you've got impaired visions. Um, not to mention the bugs, grit, and other stuff that gets in your eyes. I mean, the amount of times I'm riding, people watch my videos, and I have my visor up, and I get smacked in the eye by something. I, I can honestly tell you, I've been hit in the eye in the past few years by a bird, by bees, and by pigeon crap. Straight in my eye. Because I have my visor open on a full face. Now, if I had you know, nothing there at all, I can't imagine all the things that would have hit me. You know, nearly on every ride during the summer you'll have something go bang off your helmet. And it's normally off the frontal area because that's where you're going. So for the argument of are you more connected to the ride with an open-faced helmet, I think if you can put your visor up and have birds and debris and all sorts and the wind come through and on your face, then an open-faced helmet is not really offering you anything great for the lack of protection that you have. The other argument I hear is that peripheral vision is far better in an open-faced helmet because, you know, it cuts down behind your eyes so you can see further out that way and they think that makes them safer. Um, maybe back in the 70s when they made helmets that had, like, slots through it like that that were, like, this thick so you literally got a tunnel vision of the road. Uh, modern helmets, they're not like that. This cutout is behind my eye. I can see all the way around. This helmet isn't even particularly like well engineered for that purpose. The, my current helmet is really cut back behind here, so there is nothing there. The, the visor goes back much further. Everything is there to give me full peripheral vision. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I like that helmet that I use. So the argument of I have better peripheral vision is bogus. It doesn't exist. The other argument that I've heard multiple times is that, oh, well, I wear glasses, so it's much easier for me to have an open-faced helmet. <sighs> this is where I... 
This argument actually hurts me when I think about it, because I think about what the repercussions of this are, that they're clearly not thinking. Okay, sure, it might be tricky. You might have to buy a different pair of glasses, a slightly different cut or something, different glasses, your normal glasses, so you can ride comfortably with them, uh, or even go to contact lenses. I admit, that may not be an option for you. But the point is, your alternative, you're saying is, well, the thing is, I have to wear glasses. If you have a crash, where are those glasses going? They're getting smashed into your eyes. You not being able to see because you can't get your glasses on in your helmet is going to be the least of your problems. You're not going to be able to see anymore. You're going to lose your eyes. No, okay, not in all examples, but just put it this way. If I said to you, hey, I'm going to punch you in the eye, or I'm going to put a piece of glass or some sharp plastic that can shatter in front of your eye and then punch it, which would you prefer? You wouldn't want to have the glass or plastic in front of your eye, would you? For obvious reasons. So frankly, I don't buy that argument, um, and you can work around it. Again, obviously, if you want to take that risk, you can carry on, but I want to just highlight why doing that is, in my opinion, stupid. And that's my point here. If you choose to do it knowing the risks, I do think you're a bit stupid, honestly. If you're doing it for the look over the functionality of having a functioning helmet, I think you're a bit stupid to do that, but that's your choice. If you don't know this, then you're ignorant, and ignorance isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, we don't know a lot of things, we have to learn, and this is why I'm trying to give my knowledge on this, my opinion, and some scientific background to explain why you shouldn't be doing this, or why I don't believe you should be. There is another side to this, remember, not only can you, you know, lose eyes, have your jaw ripped off or broken, um, you know, smash your nose up, serious facial injuries, you can also smash your teeth, well often smash your teeth to pieces. Uh, you've then got dental problems for years. I don't understand how the possibility of losing your vision, smashing up your face, breaking or partly removing your jaw, I've seen the picture too, but I don't get how all of those risks of those severe injuries to your face is worth looking good. Or using the argument of, you know, wind in your face is more exhilarating, or, or that your glasses are this way, or what. I, I don't get I, no, I don't get it. Approaching with common sense, to me, that balance does not pay off, and I don't understand anyone who could come to the conclusion that that list of injuries is worth being more connected to the ride, I, because of the wind and stuff, because I don't believe that's a thing. That really, to me, strikes me as something that people who don't really ride a lot would say. Uh, they're, they're more making out riding to be some mystical dreamland of, you know, freedom and of open roads, when the reality is it's not that. It's, it's a road full of idiots in big metal boxes that want to crush into you all the time, and an unforgiving road surface which your face will be ground off. And yet people will still say to me, well, I don't think it's that risky. Well, okay, find out the alternative. Take this angle grinder. Turn it on and start rubbing it on your face. What's the difference? That's what's going to end up happening if you have a crash. There's another thing that people say there, which is, well, you know, well, I won't crash, I'm a safe rider. It doesn't matter. You can be the safest rider in the world and have a car just out of nowhere jump a red light and sideswipe you. The other argument, of course, is people say to me, well, I'm only on a scooter or one too far, I'm not going that quick, it doesn't really matter, I'm not high risk. As if, you know, the only people that get really badly injured on a bike or die on a bike are, uh, are riding at 150 miles an hour or something. And that's just simply not true. Uh, I was recently watching a programme about a crash scene uh, investigation team and they were doing a couple of investigations on two fatalities on bikes that were basically just the bike clipped the car at 30, 40 for some reason. Um, both times I believe it was actually the car driver's fault. Um, and they were tipped into the ground and they died. In both instances, about 30, 40 miles an hour, just because of the way that they went down. If in the face of all of that you still think that an open-faced helmet is adequate, or that it's a good idea, or that that's the thing you'll use, um, that's fine, that's your choice, you have made an informed decision, you've heard some of the evidence and you said, you know what, I'll take the risk, it's worth it to me. And no one can say anything to you against that. And that's the same reason that when people say, you know, oh, open-faced helmet should be banned, no, in this world, with all the health and safety, people are very often removed from being able to make life and death or risky decisions for themselves. The government kind of go, no, 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 you can't make a decision, you just can't do that. And I think that's wrong. Um, you, you have the right to do stupid things uh, because it is your life uh, and an open-faced helmet is, I can't see how that's going to ever cause you to hurt someone else. It's only ever going to be you that's going to get hurt by that, you know? So as I say, you like it, you crack on, but if you're a new rider and you're thinking about it, 
that's the information that's out there. Look into it more yourself, make your decision, be informed. If you watch this and you continue to use an open-faced helmet, as I say, that is your decision. But I really hope that I'm not proved right to one of the people watching this, because you are going to feel like an idiot when you wake up after a crash and realise that if you've just gone and got a decent helmet with a front chin bar, you might still have, you know, a face. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you agree with me that the options should still be there to have open-faced helmets, but that is the choice and the risk of the person using it, then like the video. If you disagree with me completely, feel free to leave a dislike on the video, but please leave a comment and explain why you feel so strongly that I'm wrong about this. The way I feel, fuck. Which is absolutely awesome. So, oh, you pug. I like to get at work, nothing like that, at the very least. Um, yeah, just, it's because it is still fucking wet. Why have I come? Just literally just got the fucking head shoved up against the fucking... Pigeon! 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 This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please check out the links in the description and all the different ways you can help support the channel. Any help is greatly appreciated.